Lazy cooking means less than three steps with minimal prep and washing up time, but with maximum flavor and variety. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an entire week of high protein, nutrient dense meals in less than two hours. First up, the Haviland slice of gains. This is my cheat code to sneaking in a ton of healthy fats and fiber for cardiovascular, digestive, and brain health. All you need to do is mix all the ingredients up together, put them in an oven-proof dish lined with baking paper, and whack it in the oven for 30 minutes, and that's done. I've chosen my favorite nuts and seeds for their fatty acid profile and fiber content, but I often switch in different nuts and seeds and fruit for a little bit of variety. While that's going, let's take a look at one of the best investments you'll ever make, a rice cooker. A rice cooker does a whole lot more than just cook rice. We're gonna start with a chicken. Chuck it in whole, fill it with water, throw in some salt, garlic, and ginger, and you're done. That'll cook for an hour, so we'll come back to it later. So now I've got less than 30 minutes till that Haviland slice is coming out, and less than 60 minutes till the chicken is done. We're gonna use that time to deal with this bad boy here, the rump cap, also known as the picanha. This is an incredibly underrated piece of meat. It's not very well known outside of South America, but it's cheap and has a robust, beefy flavor with a smooth, buttery texture. Score the fat and give it a bit of salt and pepper and chuck it skin down in the pan for eight minutes. The goal here is to render the fat down into a nice crispy edge. Now I know what you're thinking, what about all that fat? Firstly, fat isn't necessarily bad, including saturated fat. And while it does contain more calories per gram, I'm trying to build muscle and have more calories to spare. But if you're concerned, you can always trim it off after and you're gonna be left with a nice lean cut of beef because there's not a lot of marbling throughout the meat. Once I've done eight minutes on both sides, it's time to get this into the oven for 10 minutes. And conveniently, it's time for the Haviland slice to come out. So we're gonna do the old switcheroo. Haviland slice out, beef goes in, 10 minutes. Once that's ready, we've got to take it out and give it another 10 minutes to rest before we cut it up, which gives us enough time now to look at our chicken. I'm going to pull it out, pull it apart, throw the breast back in with some rice and let it all cook up in that delicious chicken broth. You can do a regular rice setting, but today we're going to use a porridge setting and use broken rice to make a congee. That'll take about 20 minutes, which means you now have 20 minutes to do whatever you like, like cleaning up, tracking your macros, or even picking your next program over on Ganbaru. You get unlimited access to all of my programs and so much more to personalize your experience. Hit the link in the description to check it all out. But what you could also do is take this chicken and saute it up with some garlic, onion, and oyster sauce. The chicken is delicious without this extra step, but if you're after an extra flavor explosion, try it out. All right, it is now the moment of truth. I've got to cut this guy open and hope that I haven't overdone it or underdone it. Woo! Perfect. So as you can see here, the meat itself is really, really lean. There's not a lot of fat running through it at all. So if you're trying to limit your fat intake or your calories, you can just trim this section of fat right off and you're left with this delicious chunk of meat here. Now, how do I go about tracking all of this stuff? Well, since I know what all the raw ingredients come to in total, all I need to do is divide that up by how many portions I need to fit into my macros. I usually have the Haviland slice with cottage cheese and some fruit as a simple breakfast or on the go meal throughout the day. And then I might cook up some extra sides of vegetables and potatoes or noodles to have with the beef or the chicken. But I normally do have the chicken congee just as its own standalone meal. This is a little bit different to the videos that I normally do. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Happy cooking and I'll catch you in the next one.